Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you? Welcome to Korea. Thank you. Yeah. When was the last time you visited Korea, by the way? No, I come to Korea quite often. Quite often so right? every day I come here um, three, four times. Three, again, four times? For work and for, for work. vacation. Vacation. To relax. And to so. relax. So I like Korea very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me quickly uh, just briefly introduce about, about, about you. Um, so Mr. Chung, uh, Adrian Chung. Uh, you're from Hong Kong, right? Yes. Yes, he's from Hong Kong, and he graduated from Harvard University. And after Harvard University, he worked at uh, UBS for a couple of years. And then he, he joined the uh, family business and become the executive vice chairman at the New World Development in 2015. Succeeded the management rights in 2017. Prior to that, uh, in 2010, Mr. Chung founded the, the nonprofit K-11 Art Foundation to support young Chinese contemporarily and groom a new generation of audiences for the contemporary art. He initiated collaboration between K-11 Art Foundation and international museums and art institutions such as Palais de Tokyo yes. uh, in Paris, an Institute of uh, Contemporary Art, aka ICA, uh, in London, and Mr. Chong also an executive director of Chotai Folk Jewelry Group, yeah. the largest jewelry firm in the world, uh, is a business tycoon and cultural entrepreneur in Hong Kong. He's more of a well-known in Korea as a uh, K-11 founder, yes. which a lot of young people love K-11, right? Uh, so my first question is, uh, Mr. Chan, can you uh, just like everybody is very curious about, especially in Korea, why you created a K11. It sounds, it sounds cool, obviously, but you had a uh, other choices. You could just directly go into the uh, family office, uh, do things more easily, but you choose to challenge yourself uh, by uh, doing your own foundation. It's called K11. Can you? Can you tell us why you did this and what's K11? So K11 has two sides. One is the K11 Art Foundation, Art which Foundations. is the nonprofit side. Yes. And we try to incubate contemporary Chinese artists, curators, and we try to groom audience. So basically, we are trying to create a contemporary Chinese cultural identity yeah. for China and also ex, uh, you know, creating a kind of a soft power for the millennials uh, about their own contemporary Chinese culture. And it has been very successful. So the non-profit non foundation has been uh, established since 2010. And it becomes a very important kind of a bridge, an institution that bridges with different institutions around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with Palais de Tokyo, Pompidou, Tokyo. ICA, Serpentine Gallery. We work with a new museum in New York, the Met, so um, MoMA PS1 as well. Mm -hmm. And it's already it's it's very successful because it's we we incubated more than fifty sixty contemporary Chinese artists mm. and also artisans around the world, and this actually helps contemporary uh, the millennials of Chinese Chinese millennials to further understand their own culture and also uh, also educating the world about contemporary Chinese culture as well. Um, the other side to K11 is the commerce side. We are trying to propagate culture, as I said just now, but at the same time, merging with commerce. So we have this new concept called museum retail in K11, oh. which we um, basically curate a museum space mm -hmm. with retail and with art and with museum space uh, all combined to become a new sense of um, experience. So it's a new journey and new proposition, a value proposition for the millennials in China. We have done a lot of research 10 years ago and realized that actually a lot of uh, Chinese young people, millennials, are very sick of um, going to the same place all again and again and again. Mm. Um, they want to have content. They want to feel that they're connected. They want to be socially engaged. They want to build a community and really build an ecosystem. Mm. And K11 actually offers that uh, proposition to them. Because when you go to a, a K11 art mall, it is a retail space, but we sell design products, art products. We sell very unique kinds of um, trade mix and products, uh, fashion and accessories to these millennials. But as well, we also have a very big museum or exhibition space where we also uh, exhibit contemporary Chinese art. In 
dialogue with also um, different types of Western uh, art as well. So it becomes a place where it's a creative hub. It's a hub where you can actually nest and uh, harbor a lot of uh, culture uh, and, and art inside. And most importantly, I think, is the idea of discovery and education because the power of K-11 is that people go into K-11 to discover mm. and to be inspired and to be educated. So we have a cultural academy program where, have, where we have 70s courses that teaches people um, and millennials or families about uh, design, art, craft, guilds, uh, sustainability, cooking, and different forms of culture in life. So basically, we are democratizing uh, art and culture and design to the public lives of the Chinese people. And I think this is very rare. And so when you think about it, it's a business model that is sustainable, yet it is a social innovation, yet it is also a way to propagate our own cultural identity. Wow, that's, that's really good. It's very impressive. Yes. Yes. But, I mean, it sounds perfect, but I, and you've been doing really great. And I know I've been to K-11 Shanghai yeah. many times, which is amazing. But, and everything sounds so perfect, but I'm pretty sure you had a challenges uh, doing the K-11. Can you share any, like, you know. I think the, the, the vision for K-11 is yeah. to create a journey of imagination. Oh. Um, so the vision is actually very long term yeah. and it's a very new disruptive way to, um, it's, it's a very disruptive model in the retail space mm. um, and also in the brand space too because K-11 mm. is not only just retail but we also have office and we're going to have K-11 residents as well. I think that the, the big challenge for the past 10 years was to find people to, have, to share the same vision and to find the same people, to find people that understand mm. our proposition. Because our proposition is not purely just on propagating art and culture, mm. but also to understand what the business model is, is all about. So we have our own K-11 design store, mm. we have our own K-11 art stores, uh, we sell our own products as well, but at the same time we have a hybrid model where we're also renting space to different fashion accessories. So if you think about it, we, have, we are a retailer, mm. yet we are also a landlord, but at the same time, we are also a museum operator as well. And also we are, art, we are also part of an art collector kind of role as well. So we have different kinds of roles, all co merge and combine together. So when you find talents, you need people to understand what are you propagating and what is the business model, and that will take a long time. And so, so finding good talents, uh, it's, it's, it's tricky. And how to really uh, compose a good, Talent, a pool of talent people, talented people to work for K11 is also a, a, a challenge. So Gosh. we have a very big training program, a big K11 university oh. cultural engagement program within K11 in order for them to, to make sure that they, they understand what the, the vision of K11 and our mission. Our mission is art, people, and nature. So art is one thing, art and design, mm. culture. Second is people, so community. How do you actually nest and actually um, create a community of, of like-minded uh, 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 vision mm -hmm. or mentality. And the third thing is sustainability, which is the green. Sweet. So green from the, the architecture, green from the project side, green from uh, building an urban farming, mm -hmm. uh, build, uh, green from really promoting greenness uh, and green awareness. Um, it's also uh, quite uh, hard to, uh, to execute. That's cute. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I have another question from um, Korean people, uh, <laughs> which is, a, uh, have you ever worked with the uh, Korean companies, or have you ever worked with a Korean big corporation, or startups, or a new brand, or what do you, what do you, what do you think about the working with the Korean companies? I think it depends. Um, uh. We have been working with a lot of um, Korean companies, yes. because we have 43 department store as well. In China? In China, we have the New World Department Store, wow. which I also oversee, we have around 43. And we work with a lot of uh, you oh. know, Korean brands that are actually in China. Um, we also work with technology companies. We work with um, brands, fashion, accessories. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of collaborations with, with, with Koreans. Um, I think it depends on, on the size of the companies and the willingness of the companies to really expand mm. to, um, uh, to greater China. To greater China. To greater China. I think if they have more an ambitious Mm. Uh, and expansion plan mm. uh, and a commitment mm. to greater China, they're more willing to connect, connect with us and easy and for them they're much mm. easier to communicate because I 
I'm sure they have researched research, and yes. also localized the mm. uh, the labor force as mm. well. Um, China is very tricky because you need to localize it, but at the same time you cannot totally decentralize it, but you can't totally centralize it. That sounds complicated. So it's yeah. it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a balance between centralization and decentralization. Uh. But once you decentralization, you have to go localization. Yes. Once you go localization, you have to hire local talents. You have to manage local talents. You need to understand the system that is working in that city as well. So each city okay. is different too. Each region is different, and that's why people would want to work with trusted partners in in Greater China. But trusted partner also difficult to find in Greater China because there's always this cultural shock, different expectations, and also uh, finding the same, you know, partners that share the same values, same mm. the same vision. It's also different because there's always this cultural shock that happens and different expectations that happens in China. So I think for um, so it's very important for Korean companies to be in China to do a big research trip. To be there to for one or two years without doing anything, oh. but understand China first. Identify, identify the cities that you want to go into. Secondly, is to build a community of friends, understand mm -hmm. each other more, uh, and then you form a collaboration and partnership. And that would be much safer than just you know diving into a to a to a to a big into the big sea and then t um, you know you know bet on whether the the, um, the relationship and the collaboration will mm. will be fruitful. Okay. Um, I have two more questions. Yeah. One from the, the current university student. Yes. And the other is actually it's, uh, my personal question. So uh, university student question is, uh, you're a very successful business tycoon and cultural entrepreneur at the same time, especially being the CEO of the New World Development and the Cho Tai Fo, and as well as the founder of the K11 Art Foundation. Is there any advice you want to give it to university students in today's world, especially in Korea? Um, I think um, I'm very into also promoting incubation, uh, acceleration, accelerators, incubation. So oh. we have incubation accelerator program that I'm setting up in Hong Kong as well. And I would like to also expand that to, to China, to Korea and Asia as well. So I really want you know, um, to encourage, encourage a lot of students to uh, take some chance mm. to create their own businesses. I understand that it's hard because you need, a, you need funding, you need mm. people, but I think if you have a strong idea, um, I think it's this, you know, instead of, you know, they should take a risk mm. and, um, and build something. I think in China now, there's a lot of platforms and accelerator program, in incubator programs that mm. are helping these companies to thrive. And even if it fails, I think it's okay. Um, a lot of times, I think the young people in Korea are mm. very, very afraid of failure. Yes, failure. Yeah, failure and failure, I think failure. that will hinder mm. and deter them from taking risk. And if you don't take risk, you don't have high return. Mm. And when you're young, you have the leeway and you have the quota, the time and, the, and, and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and your youth to actually take risk. So I will always want to, when I see young people, I always encourage them to take the risk and not to be so um, concerned about failure. Okay. Okay, it's one last question. Yeah. It's coming from my personal. Yes. Uh, I, I've known you for a while, and um, we hung out before, and I, I'm actually quite curious. Um, I mean, it's usually people would say, people who doesn't know you, who, do, who don't know you, then they'll probably say, you're lucky to be part of a uh, Chang's family, where it's, uh, people say that kind of stuff. But I think it's, it's, it's lucky for the uh, New World Group to have you as a next generation. But what's, what is your dream then? I mean, you have pretty much everything. I mean, you were successful with K11. I mean, you know, New World Group is doing, doing well. And your business in Greater China is awesome. You're awesome. But what's, what is your dream? What are you, what are you, what, what are you trying to achieve? My achie I, mean, I think for me, it's uh -huh. um, if you you know, take aside all the background, yeah. all the resources, everything. I want to build a cultural ecosystem for China to really promote cultural Chinese, uh, you know, cultural identity and contemporary Chinese culture to the world. Mm. So uh, I also want to focus more on not on just art design, but also in craft and guild, but also building that ecosystem that will connect with the world. Mm. And I think it's very important that um, as Chinese, this cultural soft power needs to be also exported to the okay. world as well. We have 5,000 years of history, 
but we need to extract the, the, the right elements culturally in order to export to the world. And uh, most importantly is that it has to be relevant to the millennials uh, and, the, and the future uh, generations. Um, so for me, I think my, my, my dream is to create that, that cultural ecosystem and also the soft power. And uh, most importantly is the K11 brand, the New World brand, the Chow Tai Fook brand, and you know, making it a, a more successful um, mm. and become a much more um, you know, different and unique. Different and unique. In the it's world. already different and unique, I think. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time once again. Thank you again. very much. Thank you. The founder of a K11 Art Foundation and executive vice chairman of a New World Group, Adrian Chang. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.